Hey, I'm Hound, and in my previous video I mentioned how the Canon M50 can actually get a good image uh, if you try hard enough, and I was going to go over that in that video, but due to length, I decided to just make it its own video, so here it is. Now, as a quick disclaimer, this is purely external factors. Uh, meaning before and after the actual shooting of the image. This isn't about lighting or composition or any of that. But it goes without saying that lighting and composition are the crux of a cinematic image, but they are qualities that have to be hacked at and chiseled over time. These are meant to be tips to get your camera quality close to that of higher grade cameras, but specifically with the Canon M50. Just don't be a complete dolt when it comes to lighting and composition. Constantly work at it over time towards getting better, and you should be fine. Settings. With the Canon M50, the 4K setting doesn't have dual pixel autofocus and is cropped in, so keep that in mind when filming. I tend to stick to 1080p, but if I'm using 4K, then it is strictly manual focus. 24 frames per second at a 180 degree shutter angle. This is one that you will pretty much never change. Everything is shot in 24 frames per second and has been for a long time. We are used to the way this looks, the motion blur specifically. So although you could possibly get away with using a different frame rate and the rare occasion of using a different shutter angle, pretty much 99% of your work will be at 24 frames per second with a 180 degree shutter angle. Getting your white balance in camera. Making sure to get your white balance in camera will allow you the most creative freedom in post. You can use a card, something white that happens to be in the shot, or in the case that you're using bicolor lighting, you can just set the camera's white balance to that of the lights. Camera shake. If you're not using a tripod, gimbal, steadicam, or any other camera holding apparatus, and are in fact shooting handheld, then your footage will be subject to a lot of shaking. The M50 does not offer in-body image stabilization, instead giving you the choice of using a digital version of stabilization. Do not do this. Shoot wide in 4K if you can, then crop in and stabilize in post if you absolutely have to use handheld. Also for B-roll, you can use higher frame rates, then slow them down in post to smooth the motion out. Just be sure to maintain the 180 degree shutter angle. Focus. Hopefully it goes without saying, but make sure your shot is in focus. Typically it is recommended to aim for the eye that is closest to camera on the subject, and in the event that there isn't a subject with an eye, go wild I guess? Now that the in-camera settings are out of the way, let's go into what you can do after shooting to make your image look better. The biggest change you'll be able to make to your image is by far the color. In order to maximize your dynamic range as well as your data retention in your highlights and your shadows, it is heavily recommended that you use a neutral profile on your camera. Specifically for the Canon M50, I like to use FilmKit Flat, but there is also Cine Style. I will leave a link below to both of those. All right, so it's time to go over color correction real quick. Uh, we're in DaVinci Resolve right now, and all I'm going to do is the bare bones amount of work that you need to do to get a neutral looking image. So what we're going to do first is we're going to go to this node here and then we're going to grab a color space transform. Uh, this is where you need to know what camera you're using uh, and what picture profile that you're using. I'm using a Canon M50 with the film kit flat and what I've noticed working the best is just going straight to Canon log and you can already tell that this is a big difference. So basically just like test out which ones work right for your camera and then stick to it. And then we're gonna to come to the first node and this is where we're going to adjust the color temperature and the tint. I know this is a warmish color. So we'll just introduce blue, which is negative. We'll go a little bit further into blue and then back into red and then find a, a decent spot to sit. I think that's good enough. And then we're gonna look for any kind of tint issues. There might be just a little bit green, so we'll push purple, come back. It's looking pretty good to me. And then we'll just adjust the contrast. Uh, I tend to do it like this. So we make it black, 
And then we raise this, raise it a little bit more, crush a little bit more of the black, and then we'll see before and after. There's obviously a lot of changes you can make, but again, this is just to get you in and out as fast as possible and to where you can experiment. So we'll take from here, which is the film kit flat, and then what it looks like now. Looks pretty good. If we look at our scopes, we can see there's a lot of red. Okay, so now it's kind of on par with the green, and then there's just a little bit too much blue. So there we go. We now have a more balanced image. Let's see where we were versus after looking at, at the scopes. A little bit green. So we'll take tint. There we go. That looks good to me. All right, so that's just a very basic thing. You take your three nodes, the first node, uh, this one, and you put the color space transform, which is the Canon log, if you're me using Canon M50 and FilmKit Flat. And then you go back and you adjust your temperature. And then you adjust contrast and then minor tweaking. So noticing that, I notice that like the highlights on my nose are just a little bit too much. Take that down just a little bit. That's a little bit better. And then when you're done with that and you got your base grade going, what you do is that's when you add your look. Let's just stick to one. I'm going to try to make this as simple as possible. Because uh, when you get to color grading, that's when it becomes really subjective about what you want. The most important thing is that you know what you want to grade it as before you even start shooting. So we're just going to do a very basic grade, just really quick. Let's go to log, push some blue, just a little bit, just tiny, tiny bit, and then a little bit of orange. Okay, that's not making much of a change. Let's try midtones. See here. Okay. It's a very 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 low key grade. It's really just whatever makes sense in the scene. When you're doing color grading, it's it's good to remember that it's subjective, and it's one of those things along with uh, your cinematography, uh, composition, and lighting that you have to just work at over time, and it'll get better. Placebos. These are things that are not inherently needed for a cinematic image, but these are things that we do notice as good looking due to now three digit years of programming. Shallow depth of field. This is one that you can actually take or leave. Now, the majority of good looking shots will have shallow depth of field with an out of focus background and bokeh and whatnot. But there's actually a lot of shots with deep focus that still look cinematic. Go ahead and use a shallow depth of field, but do not be afraid to experiment with this one. Black Pro Mist. Well, now we're completely into optional territory. A Black Pro Mist filter is a filter that goes in front of your lens that is used to soften the image and roll off the highlights, adding this little bloom effect as well as making skin look creamy. I can't afford one of these filters right now, so let me show you how you can recreate this in DaVinci real quick, as well as link you to a couple videos in the description.
letterboxes. Letterboxes are the black bars that you will typically see on a 16x9 display when a piece of media was shot at or exported at a wider aspect ratio. You can add these to your film by cropping your image. You could even add a PNG of the black bars if you want. But most people tend to recommend that you create a project in the new resolution and export in that resolution. Just make sure that whatever you do, that you stick to an aspect ratio before you start filming so you know how to frame your shots. Now, yes, widescreen is more good looking than 16 by nine, but that doesn't mean a 16 by nine shot can't be cinematic. film grain overlays, and these are even more optional than Black Pro Mist filters. We use film grain overlays on top of digital footage to dirty it up and give it this organic feel of the film that we've become accustomed to after watching it for over a hundred years now. So there it is. All the tips that I can think of to help you get externally from a normal shot to a shot that you can be proud of. I hope this helps you with understanding a little bit more about filmmaking as well as what it means to get a cinematic image. If you need help with anything, feel free to ask in the comments, but yeah, later.